Today's Friday, we're doing Friday restaurant deliveries. We're delivering the James Beard Award winning chef. So I'm gonna bring you with me. I'm gonna show you who I'm delivered to, how much I'm charging, how I'm taking these orders, how I'm invoicing people, everything you wanna know about selling your backyard produce to chefs and how I built my life to a place where I just walk out to my backyard every day, grow vegetables, and I deliver them to the best chefs in town. So let's go, baby, I'll show you how I do it. Now, people always think that I just use my connections from being a chef and because I used to work for Dolly Parton and her company, somehow magically that made it so that I had magically grow all this produce in my backyard and sell it to all the top chefs in the southeast but that couldn't be further from the truth i worked my tail off to get here and i don't use any connections from that part of my life well make sure you watch this video to the end because i'll tell you the story of how i used to work for dolly park also it's about 6 a.m katie and max get here at 6 30 so i just log into my square account make some invoices i print off a couple of them that require me to bring a paper invoice and then some of them just get an emailed invoice i'll show you like how much we're charging so i'm communicating with all the chefs just through text messages so i'll show you what those text messages look like and then how i enter them into here we put the orders on the board downstairs so the girls can get them all packed up for me and then we're going to take those out and uh, go deliver them today okay so it's like 6 20 27 now katie gets here at like 6 30 on the dot so i gotta like get together real quick go meet her get her working on some stuff i gotta have her harvest some basil get me out of here and uh go make my deliveries i'm bringing y'all with me all right so i just backed my truck down to my little loading area here where i can pack all the orders into the truck to deliver them i don't bring my refrigerated trailer i got the dogs take care of my coffee made all my invoices printed out so now we're gonna go get the orders all packed up and get them in the truck i'll show you how we do it Okay, so it's like 8 a.m. right now. I have to leave here within two hours at the latest because I have to deliver to Blackberry Mountain by 11 a.m. because it's a warehouse and then they deliver to the resort from there and their last trolley leaves at noontime. So I gotta be there in time for the trolley to deliver to the resort. And Chef Avi ordered some of these onions, but we just harvested them and they're not really cured or anything. So I'm just gonna cut some tops off, throw them in a box real quick so I can get that order ready for Chef Avi. And then so we pan right all the orders up here so that when we're washing and packing, then the orders can get packed appropriately at that time. So I've got kind of my orders up there. I also have them on my phone in my square so I can just kind of go through my orders and get everything packed. But they're kind of staged in this cooler over here. So I'll show you that. Max went home sick yesterday and called out today she's not feeling good so where you don't have orders packed like it's perfect as usual so i gotta do a little bit of packing still generally my restaurant orders are all going to be in these coolers and this is where i'm going to pull all my restaurant orders from so these are all two uh big two pound bags that's how we're selling salad greens to restaurants okay so it looks like everything else i'm gonna have to pack from the cool box so we have some orders to put together for sure uh we're, we, are, we are not in great shape today but it's okay i got two hours before i gotta leave so it's not like too much of a crunch we got this uh i, I got katie out here she's here to help me if i need her to but i mean I generally do this all by myself and leave Katie like harvesting stuff for tomorrow's market. Okay, so I just harvested Chef Avi's onions. With the box, it's 20.3, so I'm just gonna go grab a few onions out of the tent and toss them in there. Okay, a few more onions for Chef Avi's order. So now that puts him at 22 pounds with the box. So that box don't weigh two pounds, so we go with that. And then I gotta grab some other stuff, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this in the truck right now. Okay, so Chef John ordered five pounds of garlic, and I don't typically anticipate that restaurants are gonna order garlic because of the price. I mean, I sold to him for 15 bucks a pound. I mean, it's pretty high price, but it's a low price for me. Um, but I was trying to move it, so, you know, I usually like get like 18, $20 a pound for my garlic, and this is like hard neck garlic. It's real nice. This ain't your grocery store garlic. Um, so I already got bagged up in these half pound bags, so that's how I've been selling it at the market. And I'm selling for 10 fresh for a half pound, but I'm probably gonna take my price down to like seven on them, so I'm getting, or eight on them this week so that I'm getting $16 a pound on it. I just wanna move this stuff. I don't wanna store it, you know? So I sell a little cheaper, I can move it pretty quick, get my money. So anyways, I've already got it in these half pound bags. So I'm just gonna leave it in those, toss these into a box or something for them. Okay, so that puts me at 5.3 with all of these little baggies on there. Like, I feel good about that. So that's like $75 worth of garlic. I mean, decent little sale, you know. Just want you to grab the crate of cucumbers. I need eight pounds for Chef John, and then I'm gonna need 10 pounds for Blackberry. So I'm gonna weigh those out real quick. And I always use a dolly, you know, it's just best practice. So I'm not like just lugging crates like this back and forth. It makes you tired, even though I could do it, you know, and I could do it fast. 
but then you're tired at the end of the day so you can't do as much work so always use the stuff that has wheels on it to transport crate is good practice this is basil for our restaurant orders and we harvested it yesterday into a bucket of water so it's just like cut flowers and we held it like this overnight with no refrigeration so we do this so the leaves can dry out down here for like 24 hours basically before we stick them in the bag and then that makes sure that it's dry and then it helps the shelf life on the basil a little bit i weigh out my pounds of basil to a pound and a half because there's so much stem you know now i'm just cutting the bottom parts of these off because that's what was in the water and so i'm just trying to get rid of that moisture so i'm not sticking uh, that moisture into the bag because that's what makes the basil like turn brown but for right now it would be too much of a pain in my butt to try to get my buckets back every week so I have to stick it in bags for them unfortunately and then I just am putting some paper towels in the bag and so that helps to absorb any moisture and then this is my one pound bag of basil and then I put another bag on top as like a lid so that it doesn't get wilty when they put it in their fridge or whatever. Okay, so I've got Blackberry Mountain's order and Chef John's order is just kind of staged right here on my drying rack for right now. I need to go like cherry pick 10 bunches of beets for Chef Avi because he's super picky. One time he called me and he yelled at me about giving him beets that were too small. So I gotta give him the right size beets because I don't wanna get yelled at. So let's go check out what we got for beets. We're gonna go get him the best ones, okay? So these are Chef Avi's beets. You know, he likes the nice big ones. So I give him all the nicest, biggest bunches and he likes the nice tops. He cooks with the tops. So this is 10 bunches of beets, $5 a bunch. So that's $50 worth of beets. Okay, so I got Chef Avi's beets all packaged up and I package them like this with two bags. Um, so I put the beets in a bag and then I put a bag on the top to protect his greens because he's just gonna go right in his walk-in cooler and if I don't have that then those tops will just get wilty on them so this is good customer service okay so it's about 9 20 now uh, my goal is to get out of here by 10 a.m so that I can drop off adopo salad greens because I'm gonna drop adopo salad greens down to adopo in coolers like this in the back of my pickup truck and it's hot out so it is not ideal but the dopo is only about a seven minute drive from here. So it's like, I'll load that stuff in my truck, head down to Adopo, drop that off real quick. And then I head out to Blackberry Farm and Blackberry Mountains Warehouse where I deliver their order in Maryville, which is like a solid 30 minute drive away, but they order a thousand dollars worth of stuff a week. So it's worth it. Um, I had two extra bunches of beets. So I just packed them in this cooler and i'm just gonna be like hey chef avi you want 12 bunches he'll probably take them like i said he yelled at me that time you know what i mean but he's a really good guy he's like a really good friend of mine and uh he just has a really strong personality but he's like always willing to help me out if i'm like hey chef like help me out bro i got like all this stuff that i need to get rid of i'll sell it to you cheap but i'll take it all you know what i mean if i give him a good price on something he'll just take it all and if i tell him i got two extra bunches of beets that i don't want he'll probably take those you know what i mean so shout out to Chef Avi, I love him, he's always supporting me for sure. Um, so then Miss Amy is a farmer's market customer, but she orders a lot. Like she comes to the farmer's market, orders like 10 bags of salad greens every weekend almost, you know? So I'm delivering to her these days. She works and lives like right downtown where I'm delivering to all these restaurants anyways. So like today, her order is 60 bucks. So, I mean, it's not chump change, you know, it's not like she's ordering $5 worth of something, uh, $60, it's a significant sale for a market gardener, um, especially for a residential client. Sometimes restaurants orders are only $60, you know, but it's like six, you get like a few $60 orders, you know, better rather than set an order minimum and say like, oh, no, nah, sorry, dude, you got to order like $100 worth of stuff. I don't do that, right? Because like I take these small orders, but you get a bunch of small orders all in the same city. It might be a pain in the butt, but, you know, at the end of the day, I come home with an extra like one, two, three hundred dollars in my pocket, but it's all small orders. But it's like, dude, you know, it's still better than standing at a farmer's market all day. Because what do you got to do at a farmer's market to make three hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars you get a lot more of those transactions they're like people want to buy one tomato you know what i mean it's like sweet that'll be a dollar fifty oh do you mind if i put that on a credit card oh yeah sure there goes three percent you got bag oh yeah ten more cents you know what i mean uh so it, it's uh 
it's all still a lot better to just like take small orders and deliver them than it is for me to take anything to the farmer's market. I try to sell as much stuff as I can every week before I even go to the farmer's market. So whether that's restaurants, residential deliveries, it don't matter to me, I'll take them all. And uh, you know, as long as I can make it happen within a day, then I make it happen. And I've yet, even when it seems stressful, like sometimes I got 10 deliveries or something like that, you know, by the time the day's over, it's a lot better still than going to a farmer's market. So Miss Amy's got two bunches of beets there, two, red, two green bell peppers, five cucumbers, and five bags of salad mix. So I'm just gonna put a couple of these bags in her tote because I like usually meet her like downtown outside her work. She just comes and meets me on the sidewalk. So I just take the stuff out of the totes, put it in the bag, and then uh, take her money and uh, then give her stuff in the bags. Um, and Miss Amy also actually owns a media company. So I'm hoping to talk to her, we've talked to her a little bit and I'm hoping to talk to her a little bit today about helping me edit videos for YouTube. Uh, we talked about it before and I am like hoping that maybe she can help me out. So we'll see what she says. Okay, so now all I got left to do is pack up Adobo's order and Adobo is like a really high end pizza place in town, you know, type uh, wood fire type place where you go order pizza and it costs you 30 or $40 for pizza. Um, but they order a boatload of salad greens from us every week. So their order today is 10 pounds of lettuce mix and 15 pounds of arugula. And we already delivered them 10 pounds of salad mix and 15 pounds of arugula on Tuesday's deliveries. And they also bought like six pounds of basil from us on, uh, on Tuesday's deliveries. But they, I think they have a contract with a different farm on basil so they're generally buying that from other people but those people don't deliver early in the week so i can usually get a tuesday delivery of basil out of them and i basically just have basil coming out of my ears okay so i got all my orders uh staged in there still and now all these boxes of head lettuce i'm just gonna stack those in the back seat of my truck and get those delivered down there I keep them in the back seat so they can stay on the ac and then i'm gonna put those coolers of salad greens and chef Bobby's beets in the back of my truck for transportation and then adopo is just really close so i'll drop their salad greens off first so they don't sit in the back of my truck while i deliver everything else blackberry mountain 30 minutes away and then i'll leave chef Bobby's beets in the back of my truck while I'm making that delivery. And then once I make that delivery, I'll take Chef Avi's beats and put them in the, in the back seat of my car so they can be in the AC for the rest of the ride to downtown. Okay, and then that's Chef John's order and, Black, and the rest of Blackberry Mountain's order. So I'm just gonna double check everything. I think I got everything ready to go. Then we're gonna hit the road and go make these deliveries. So let's go. So just ran back in the house, check and make sure I had everything, realized I missed three pounds of potatoes for Miss Amy. And I just went ahead and grabbed a sample of an eggplant for Chef Avi because he's gonna be buying about six cases of eggplants a week from us. And I just wanna like make sure that it's the right size for him. So we're gonna give him an eggplant and see how that goes. All right, y'all, so just hit the road, just pulled out of the driveway, and we're headed to Adobo Pizza. So the owner of Adobo Pizza is Brian, and Brian used to work at Blackberry Farm, which is uh, the, the sister resort to Blackberry Mountain that we're delivering to, which is a prestigious resort uh, in the Smoky Mountains, really close to here. So Adobo Pizza was probably my second restaurant client. My first restaurant client ever was Simple on Severe, owned by a guy named Chef Kendall, and Chef Kendall's really good to me. And the way I met Chef Kendall was that this girl at the CrossFit gym was like, oh, I got a buddy who's a chef, and he might be interested in buying some stuff off you. And I had um, harvested some carrots earlier that day, and I like posted it on Instagram, and the guy followed me on Instagram that day, and then he just instantly sent me a message to uh, the picture of carrots that I posted. And he said, I'll, I'll take all those carrots off your hands, bro. And it was like 100 pounds of carrots. So I was like, oh, sweet. And I didn't even know what to charge him. I just brought them to him. And I was like, well, what, what can you pay? You know, I think we came up with like three or four bucks a pound at the time. I mean, these days I'm charging uh, like five, six, seven bucks a pound, depending on the customer and sales outlet. But, um, you know, back then that was awesome. And 
so then I started working with Chef Kendall and then Chef Kendall like shared a post that he had tagged me on and Brian Adopo saw that post and then he instantly reached out to me and said uh, something to the effect of hey man like are you doing markets or restaurants or like basically he just said can I buy can I buy salad greens and arugula and kale and things like that from you and I was like heck yeah dude but it was like kind of the middle of winter so like a few months went by and like I didn't know like I didn't know him very well other than he had sent me those messages so I just went ahead and planted a bunch of arugula salad greens and kale for him not really knowing if he, he would actually buy it so a few months went by I grew a bunch of salad greens kale and and arugula and then I just reached out to him on Instagram and I was like hey man you still I've got a bunch of salad greens arugula kale and everything if you're still interested in buying it he said yeah man and he bought like $500 worth of stuff first order the following week I went back to work and you know they ordered like another $500 order that week and I just told my boss I said hey man Adopo just placed a $500 order at my farm I gotta go home and I never went back to work after that um, and I just been uh, that was three years ago and I just been growing vegetables in my backyard ever since and that's how I met Brian at Adopo and they buy stuff from me every week now Okay, so I just pulled out of a dopo, and even though we're like right downtown, I don't make my downtown deliveries right now because I gotta make it to Blackberry Mountains Warehouse before 11 a.m. drop their stuff off so that they can drive their stuff the rest of the way to the resort, which is another like 40 minutes away from their warehouse deep into the Smoky Mountains. So it's like in the middle of nowhere. It's like a retreat, you know, like once you go there, you're not leaving. Um, so I go down to Blackberry Mountains Warehouse in Maryville, about 30 minutes away from here. And then I backtrack my way back because I got to go through like West Knoxville to make a delivery to Bistro by the tracks in Bearden. So I go deliver to Blackberry and then backtrack back to Bistro in Bearden, back to downtown and then back home because I just live like 10 minutes from, from downtown. So like Adobo's not quite downtown you know so i but adopo is close to my house and since i got their salad greens in the back of my truck i deliver that real quick to get it out of the heat get that delivered and now i drive all the way back to maryville to the blackberry warehouse deliver there and then i'll backtrack back to downtown and finish the rest of my deliveries and make my way home i got chef katie back at the farm right now she's just wrapping up things for the farmer's market for tomorrow and trellising all our tomatoes and then i'll touch base with her when we get back and she takes a weekend off and uh i'm not sure what we're gonna be up to on monday yet i just whew, gonna make it through the weekend first baby <laughs> so the way i got to selling stuff to blackberry mountain my friend jenna baker who's a vegetarian chef in town and had a restaurant Jenna saw some posts that some of the other local chefs had tagged me in and then she reached out to me when she opened her vegetarian restaurant a couple years back and asked me if uh, I could deliver for her also. So I sold Jenna a bunch of produce for last year and then her restaurant just didn't make it and she went out of business but she's working on a new projects so i've been talking to her again and we're hoping to start doing business with jenna again soon but the chefs from blackberry mountain ate at jenna's restaurant when it was open and they said jenna these vegetables are amazing where do you get these and she said oh this dude mike grows it in his backyard well next thing you know the chef from blackberry mountain got my phone number gave me a call and wanted to know how they could buy my produce so now blackberry mountain has become my number one customer and they're ordering about over a thousand dollars worth of produce pretty much every week like this week it's like 11 or 1200 some weeks it's like eight or nine hundred and it's been up to 1600 before so uh you know they're ordering a good amount of produce from us every single week so i'm super grateful for that all the networking jenna giving us the introduction but you know it's all word of mouth and reputation i don't do any marketing i'd spend zero dollars on marketing okay so just moving chef off his beats in the back of my truck to try to get him out of the heat and then next stop we're gonna bring this to bistro then we're gonna meet chef avi downtown and deliver miss amy's stuff
Okay, so just got delivered to Blackberry's warehouse. Now we're gonna backtrack back towards downtown. Hit up Bistro by Bistro by the tracks at Bearden on our way back to downtown to deliver to Chef Avi and Miss Amy. And sometimes we're delivering to other restaurants downtown, but they just didn't order anything this week. And so I don't know if how much of the conversation you could hear with me talking to them, but they were like, oh, you made it just in time because I'm actually running just a few minutes late. Like it's a little bit after 11 right now. It's like 11.05, 11.10, you know? So like I said, they're like, they take their last trolley back down to the resort by noontime and like they ain't waiting for me you know so like if i don't make it on time they'd be done they'd be gone and then the chefs don't get their produce until the next day so if they're expecting it today and i miss their boat i guess i'd just drive it down to the resort i'd probably just call them and, and just drive it all the way down there but it's like another 45 minutes down to the actual resort from the warehouse you know it's like over 30 minutes here so it's like an hour into the smoky mountains national park is where the resort is so i don't want to miss that boat so it's a good thing we made it on time today and so i just pulled into the parking lot right here hard knocks pizza right behind me so they order tomatoes from me but they won't talk to me about anything else so we'll start stopping here and they've got three locations so we'll be delivering tomatoes to all three of their locations starting in like a week or two tomatoes just aren't quite ready yet but they just won't buy anything else they just don't like the prices i think they just don't work for them and that's fine i sell them tomatoes in the summertime and that's it and i don't really hear from them much for the rest of the year uh sometimes i'll text them and they just don't even say anything and there were several restaurants this week that i texted and they just didn't say anything back so you just can't take offense to those types of situations you just try again the following week some of these chefs they're just super busy they don't need anything they see my text they just stick their phone in their pocket and they carry on with their week because they just don't need anything from me so i try not to take those things personally it's just part of business so i just wanted to kind of hop on and say that you know that sometimes you just got to keep trying with these people if they don't need anything it's okay they just don't need anything and just try again the next week they might need something so like hard knocks they just don't want anything i offer except for tomatoes so they buy tomatoes in the summer and that's it so I just pulled in here where uh, Bistro by Bearden is just right down the street. So we'll go deliver them and then we'll finish up our day downtown. All right. So we're just pulling out of Bistro in Bearden. And uh, I told the guys what I was doing that I was kind of making a video of, uh, about highlighting all the restaurants that I'm delivering to. And so I asked them if I could go out to the dining room, take a few shots. Uh, they gave me a menu. Um, these guys are my friends, but they're super busy, so I didn't even ask them to get on camera or anything like that. I took a couple shots of their kitchen and dining room, their wine cabinet, so you can see the type of place it is. I got a shot of their menu here. You can check out, see what kind of things they're serving, but uh, they're doing really cool things. It's a really nice restaurant. Um, so now we're going to go... <sighs> Man, how are we going to get there? Yeah, we're just going to head this way, and we're going to hop back on the highway to downtown and we're gonna hit up Chef Avi at Copita and last delivery of the day is gonna be Miss Amy and then I might talk to Miss Amy and see if she can help me with editing my YouTube videos. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so it's always kind of a pain in the butt to park downtown, but they got these little places where I can leave my flashers on and this is uh, right around the corner is the hotel where Copita is, which is Chef Avi. So we just walk around this corner, make Chef Avi's delivery, and then I'm gonna come back to the truck, get my stuff, and go see Miss Amy. Cup, this is yours. What is it? Beet greens. Yeah. Oh, nice. So those are the beet greens. That's amazing. See, it's gonna be a salad tonight. Cool. You put in the beet salad? Yeah. Nice. So these are my farmer's market booth spots for tomorrow. They shut the whole street down and this is all farmer's market. So they marked the booth numbers the day before. So we're all set up for tomorrow's market. And All right, y'all. So I just got back from doing the Friday restaurant deliveries. There's a few restaurants that we didn't deliver to. We're oftentimes delivered to JC Holdaway, who 
executive chef and owner Joseph Lin is James Beard award-winning best chef for the Southeast twice. And so we're typically delivering to him, but he just didn't order anything today. Sometimes we're delivered to the cruise farm pizza barn, but we delivered to them on Tuesday. So they just didn't need anything today. And they usually order like once or twice a week. And then on occasion we're delivering to Lilu and Osteria Stella whenever they need stuff. Sometimes they're really good customers and sometimes I just don't really hear for, from them for several months. So it's like, you know, kind of hit or miss sometimes with these people, but you can't take offense. You know, the restaurant business has a slow time of year and it's busy time of year. And all restaurants, busy season and slow season is different. These guys are very busy no matter whether it's the busy season or the slow season. So when you're reaching out to them and you don't hear back from them, don't take offense just reach out next time you got something to offer them and if they need something they'll buy it if they don't then maybe you'll hear from them the next time so as promised i'm gonna tell you my story about how i used to work for dolly parton and i appreciate y'all coming along with me to do my restaurant deliveries now i gotta get packed up for the farmer's market and i'm gonna see y'all in the next one oh well, the way i ended up in tennessee i was working at i was the head banquet chef at the Essex Culinary Resort and Spa in Burlington, Vermont area. And that company got bought by like a big management company who was managing the resort, who partnered with Dollywood uh, to open the Dollywood Dreammore Resort. And so one day, I, I think I did like seven weddings in one day. I was the head banquet chef there. So I took care of all the events and weddings. And then I would also cook in the restaurants. And so I did like seven weddings in one day. And then at the end of the day, I'd already worked like 12 or 13 hour day. And I went up to the restaurant and I cooked dinner at the chef's table. The chef's table is like this bar where you stand there, you cook in front of a bunch of rich people. One of the guys sitting at the, at the chef's table was the corporate executive chef that day. And he said, aren't you the guy who just did all those weddings? I said, oh yeah, that's me. He said, now you're up here cooking on the chef's table. I said, oh yeah, yeah. And just, you know, try and make things happen. He said, dude, this is the best steak I've ever had in my life. I said, cool, that's awesome, man. He goes, you want to relocate for work? I said, yeah, where are we going? He goes, you know who Dolly Parton is? I said, nah. He said, you ever been to Tennessee? I said, nope. He said, you want to move there? I said, yep. And uh, about three months later, I drove, I packed up everything I could in my car, drove to Tennessee, and I started my first day working for Dolly Parton's company, Dollywood Dream More Resort. And I opened that resort. I spent a couple years working there. And I took care of all the big events there, also weddings, business functions, things like that. But then when Dolly Parton comes to town, it's a big deal, right? So I was always in charge of taking care of Dolly's food when she was there, and I'd personally make her meals and deliver them to her. So one time, one of those occasions, she asked me if I wanted to come out to her bus and take a picture. And so that's how I got this picture. She's super sweet, you know, just like you would imagine her to be. So when I got out there, she was talking to me just like a normal person, and then the rest of my crew came and we took the picture and then for Christmas that year she asked me to cook dinner for her and her family and I accepted so I had the opportunity to personally cook Dolly Parton her Christmas dinner with all her brothers and sisters she's got like eight brothers and sisters it's a huge family brought them all in and um, she told me it was one of the best meals she ever had and then like a week later I got this handwritten thank you note in the mail from her manager so it was a really sweet experience i had a great time working for dolly parton and her company and getting to know her a few times when i got to rub shoulders with her it was a really cool experience but you know as part of those experiences that made me realize that i did not want to be indoors cooking food for the rest of my life and i just like being outdoors growing food so that's what i'm gonna keep doing so i appreciate y'all watching and i'll see y'all in the next one People say things to me like, oh, it's easy for you to sell your produce just to be a chef or you used to work for Dolly Parton so you got all the connections and you know everybody, right? Like, no, baby, I'm a hustler. 